Hey guys, it's Leanne. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, if you're not new, welcome back. So today's video is a Foundation Friday video. And today I'm gonna to be reviewing the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. I've used the shade Buff to achieve this look. And may I mention before we start that e.l.f. is cruelty free and vegan, which is straight away a bonus for this product. It's already a winner in my book just for that fact alone. But if you want to know the real tea on whether this foundation actually stands the test of time and actually lives up to the claims that it actually makes, then please keep on watching. I'd also just like to wish one of my lovely followers and subscribers here on my YouTube channel a happy birthday. So happy birthday to Anna Lynn 1489 Have a lovely day, Angel. So the first product I'm going to be going in with is a new product for me and this is the Too Faced Pro Active Nourishing Hangover X Replenishing Face Primer. So it's a very, very popular product. I've seen so many rave reviews about it on YouTube but yeah, I still haven't got around to trying it until now. But I'm just going to read out some of the benefits of this primer. By the way, side note, it's a silicone free primer. Hangover is a revolutionary makeup primer infused with coconut water, probiotic based ingredient and skin revivers that work together to boost the skin's radiance, promote elasticity and help hydrate while locking down makeup for fresher, longer and more flawless wear. Also on the bottle, it's got some results of what people have been saying and as you can see, they all say 100%. So 100% of people said makeup went on smoother. 100% said makeup looked more radiant, 100% said skin looked hydrated and 100% said their skin had the appearance of a full night dressed. And this is the mini version by the way in case anyone's wondering. So this is just a 20 milliliter bottle and it's actually got a little pump. I'm just going to give the bottle a little shake. Ooh. Okay so some fell on to my finger then. And it did say that the ingredients were, had coconut, coconut infusion, but you can't really smell the coconut scent. It smells lovely. So I'm just working that into the skin as I always do with fingertips. And that feels very tacky on my skin. So it's one of those primers that feels a little bit sticky, which is fine. But yeah, I do actually have high hopes for this product. I'm hoping that this matches my skin tone. I've actually tried this foundation before, but to be honest, I remember loving it, but then I ran out and I didn't repurchase it until now. So I'm excited to try it again, but I have actually forgotten what I did like about it or what I maybe didn't like. So this is an almost first impression. But yeah, like I said, I'm trying this primer and because I've never tried this before and I can't really remember what this was like on the skin, obviously I'm not gonna judge this primer too much today because it could be the foundation that's doing all the major work or the primer, we don't know. So I'm gonna be using this in my next few tutorials. So keep your eyes peeled if you wanna know more about this product. So the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation, if I remember rightly, it was £7.50. But the thing is, I actually looked at the bottle and it's only a 20 milliliter bottle. Now most foundations are 30 milliliter bottles that's just like the standard for foundations 30 milliliters but obviously for the price point i'm not complaining but i'm just little heads up it's actually 10 mils less than most foundations and i'm just going to read out some of the claims that this foundation makes i've actually also noticed that although my one is called flawless satin foundation i watched a review it was on another youtuber channel and their foundation this exact foundation was called flawless finish foundation so I'm not sure if this is a different version. If anyone knows any different to me, then please let me know in the comment section down below. But the bottles look the exact same. The shades seem the exact same from their review and the color I found in store. So it's a lightweight, full coverage and oil-free formula. It gives a semi-matte finish that lasts all day long, helps restore uneven skin textures and tones. And for visibly brighter skin, it is perfect for all skin types. So, some big claims there. Full coverage is a big claim and also semi-matte finish that lasts all day long. Also, restoring uneven skin texture and tones. By the way, this foundation runs in 40 shades, so that is quite, quite impressive. That's quite inclusive as well. 
So I'm just giving the bottle a shake and as always, I'm just gonna put some pumps on my little palette. So I'm gonna go in with four pumps, which should be, should be okay. So on one side, I'm gonna go in with a beauty blender and on the other side, I'm gonna be going in with a brush. That's just for me to see which side I prefer better with this foundation. So the brush I'm gonna be going in with on the right side of my face is the Morphe M439 brush. Now, if you can see here, it's, it's quite a runny foundation, but it's actually quite a thick formula as well. It's not very, very liquidy. And I think that this shade should be fine for me. I was just kind of guessing in store because obviously, oh, I just blended this with a brush. Oh, sugar. Yeah, I actually, um, I just guessed because obviously in store, in store you can't actually try any testers out because obviously coronavirus. Straight away, it has not given me a full coverage whatsoever. There's still redness here on the skin and it actually feels very, very, very tacky. So I'm just gonna go in with another layer on this side. And again, it's like here, there's redness. Same way there's redness here. But obviously we've only applied one layer as of yet. Now I'm finding that this foundation is not really working well with a brush. There's a lot of brush hair strokes in the foundation. So I just dim the lights to see if it shows up a little bit more. But here on the chin, there's a lot of streak marks and also on this side of the face. So that's not a very good start really. Because if you watch any of my other tutorials, you'll know that I mostly blend out one side with a brush. And the general thing is that it normally gives a more full coverage. However, this is just not really building up. The more I'm going over it with a brush, the more it just seems to be not really building as good as maybe other foundations. On the chin here, there's still so much redness. No matter how many times I go in and layer, it's just not, the foundation is just not actually sticking to the chin. It's literally just buffing off the chin, which is not, not what I want. Bear in mind, I actually don't have oily skin. My skin is combination slash normal. So sometimes it's oily here, just in like the T-zone, but mostly it's quite, quite a normal skin. So this is just not good. I can't imagine if it's already swiping off here on someone with a normal slash combination skin, then I'm not sure how this would react on someone with very oily skin. Okay, so, so far for this side, only on the chin, I am not one bit impressed whatsoever. Literally, it's still red, it's just not sticking to the chin at all. And I don't think that's down to like my technique because like I say, I've tried this with many other foundations. This is how I would normally apply foundation. Sometimes with a brush, sometimes with a beauty blender. And this is just not, not sticking and it's definitely not full coverage whatsoever. Here. You can see blemishes, redness. So, so far, I'm just not very impressed with this foundation. So, now that this side has blended, do you see any difference in terms of coverage? I felt like, personally, this side blended out a lot easier with a beauty sponge, which is damp, by the way. And it weren't really removing product. Whereas I felt with the brush, it was definitely removing product. So I am gonna to have to go over the chin, the nose, a little bit on the forehead with the beauty sponge as that seemed to work better. I actually think that the side with the brush does look more full coverage. But then again, I've done like two layers on this side and one on this side. So I'm just gonna go in with one more pump. And also this foundation just feels very slippery. And I just don't ever like the, the texture of this foundation. I don't really like the feel of it. When I'm touching it, it just feels very like greasy. So second layer now. Applying this foundation with the sponge is a lot better and a lot more full coverage. So as you can see on the chin, it's not perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a lot better than with the brush. So as you've seen, I did not use a pore fill and primer and my pores are looking literally so good if I say so myself. They're not showing up, they're doing cream enlarged. 
but yeah again here blemishes are showing through already redness straight away the more i'm applying here just still the exact same situation so far it's definitely not full coverage that is a wild claim and yeah definitely not full coverage whatsoever this is the maybelline superstay 24 hour foundation this is a very very full coverage foundation i've also done a review on this foundation i will actually leave the link in the description bar of this video so this is the maybelline on the hand here both look quite a block color on the skin but if you notice with this one it's more consistent all over i'd say whereas this one even though it's not the neatest i'll try and just straighten these edges yeah this one i don't know you can see it's not consistent fully so in some areas and bear in mind i've done the exact same motions just with different fingers if you actually look at this one compared to this one this one is definitely inconsistent like here it's a bit lighter here it's a bit like more opaque so yeah i hope that that helps to explain what i'm actually talking about with this with this elf foundation so i've now got some other new products to try but i'm going to be testing for the first time today the morphe fluidity full coverage concealer and this is in the shade c1.25 and this concealer is a soft matte formula so it claims to be full coverage I am just going to let that sit on the skin for a little while. On the bridge of the nose, Cupid's bow, chin area, and a little bit on the forehead. But the reason I'm leaving it on the skin like this is because let your concealer dry down a little bit before going in straight away and blending it out. It will actually give a more fuller coverage. I'm going to blend out the outer portion of the face first because obviously I would want my under eyes to be the most full coverage. Now, on a positive note about this e.l.f. foundation, I'm actually noticing that it's actually not emphasising any fine lines and the foundation is not actually sitting in any fine lines. But that is one saving grace about this foundation. I've obviously got foundation on the lips now, just as you do when you're doing foundation, it goes on your lips sometimes. It feels so greasy. When I went like that just then when I was talking, my lips literally like stuck together. It feels so, so greasy. So that's also another thing that I don't really like. Side note, it does dry very, very quick. You need to get to work quite quick with this concealer. I'm noticing that the concealer is only very slightly starting to crease now. I'm just blending these creases out before I set it. When I went to buy the Too Faced primer, the lady behind the till actually gave me the, for free, this was just as a little goodie, the Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Instant and Long Term Lip Plumper. Now, I've never used this product before, but I did smell it the other day, just out of like curiosity, but I stopped myself from using it because I knew I wanted to use it for one of my videos. But it actually smells like strawberry and lime copper big, which is a cider drink. It says, our breakthrough formula delivers immediate and long-term plumping with advanced lip volumizing technologies applied day and night to dramatically hydrate, nourish, and increase volume. Now, it says you may experience a slightly intense tingle that can last up to five or ten minutes. So far, I am not feeling any tingling whatsoever. So let me know if you think it makes any difference to my actual lips in terms of like size and volume, plumpness. Let me know what you think. So yeah, I'm just going to do the rest of the makeup off camera now. I'll return in a minute when I have some new products, which are lip products and eyelashes. Okay, I'm actually starting to feel a tingle in the lips now. It's not painful, it's just a weird sensation and it feels a little bit tight, like it's making the lips go a little bit tight. Checking in with the new products now. So a new product I picked up is the Morphe Luminous Setting Spray. Spray this over the face just to refresh the face and make the powders melt into the skin more and not look powdery or cakey. That mister is actually amazing. It smells of coconut, so it smells so nice, so refreshing. But I'm actually very impressed with how fine the mist is. It doesn't come out in big squirts. It literally is just a continuous fine mist. So hopefully that should make my makeup last a little bit longer. So I do actually feel like it made me a little bit glowier. Hopefully it will add to the makeup's longevity because I'm actually going to work later and I'm going to be wearing a mask like the whole rest of the world. But yeah, I'm going to be going in now with some new lashes. 
these are new from morphe so i've picked up two styles because they just looked so fabulous so i picked up these two lashes now obviously they are bold so that style is the style yas queen another lash style that i picked up was glambassador these are also quite dramatic but they're not as dramatic as as dramatic as yas queen so i might actually try this the style glambassador now these actually were quite difficult to apply and i'm noticing that they actually look like two different eyelashes so this one looks more level and this one looks a lot bigger i literally am debating if they've put two different eyelashes in the case like they look the same when i'm looking into the mirror now but on camera when i'm looking straight forward the, the middle of this eye just seems a bit higher okay i take that back they definitely haven't put in two different eyelashes but i think actually what the problem is is they're really hard to stick down in the corners and the outer corners so here the middle just seems to be a lot a lot higher i don't know but yeah really hard to stick down in the inner corners and that's probably because it's a heavier lash now i'm just gonna wipe off this Too faced lip injection extreme i'm wiping this off the lips it's done for about five minutes or so i'll just mattify the lips again now the other new products that i'm going in with today are lip products and they are both by morphe now i adore morphe's color pencils so i've picked up this one in the shade vibes now these can be used as eyeliners or lip liners and i'm going to be topping that with the morphe lipstick cream lipstick in the shade whipped i've never tried a morphe lipstick before of any variety the liquid lip cream anything oh it's actually not as dark as i thought okay so this liner is reminding me of the nyx cosmetics cocoa lip liner and that's literally an all-time favorite of mine Yeah, lips are feeling very very greasy so i don't have much hope for the cream lipstick lasting all day but hey how i'm still gonna try it out i love this the shine on the lips i love that so i'm actually very impressed with this lipstick i'll let you know how well it lasts throughout the day my thoughts so far on the new products that i've tried apart from the lips and the foundation i want to just give my thoughts on the luminous setting spray so for me it's a definite yeah it smells gorgeous on the skin it definitely gave me a nice glow and i do feel like the makeup looks quite nice and flawless and glowy now the morphe fluidity full coverage concealer which is not full coverage by the way like if you can see here you can still see i've got like a shadow that just like most concealers don't cover this up so you know i weren't expecting morphe to but because it is claiming to be a full coverage concealer you would expect it to but not many concealers ever can cover this shadow up but it is a good concealer that was a bit hard to work with because it dried so quick however I did manage to blend it it looks fine now one good point about this product is that it definitely doesn't crease like some concealers instantly crease and stay creased this concealer i found that it actually does not really emphasize fine lines under the eyes it does quite a good job at like minimizing them it does crease a little bit but in comparison to other concealers i've used this is really not that bad this is quite good for being anti-crease so i'd recommend it if you are someone who struggles with concealers creasing but not like totally sold on the formula to be honest now the Too Faced hangover replenishing face primer i'm not sure about this yet the skin looks nice now it looks fine it felt lovely on the skin it smelt lovely on the skin but like i've said because i was actually just reviewing the elf foundation today i'm not sure which product to give credit to because like i said i've never used that before apart from today so i've got no track record of how it works with other products and the elf foundation obviously that i haven't actually really used that for a very long time and i forgot 
why I liked it. I just remember that I did like it, but I've actually forgot why. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to be using that again. But for £12, it's definitely a nice a nice product to have. Now, the Morphe Lip Planet in the shade Vibes is a definite yes for so, me. So, I'm just checking in as I said I would. So, as you can see on the clock behind me, it is 10 o'clock in the evening time now. And this foundation has been on my skin for about eight and a half hours now. In that time, it's been an exceptionally hot day today in Liverpool. It's been absolutely roasting today. And also I've done a shift in work where, like I've said before, I actually had to wear a face mask. I'm just gonna take a closer look at the foundation and give you my final thoughts. So today while I was on shift, I could actually feel my skin sweating. I could feel the makeup sweating off in certain places. Like the chin, as you can see, it's completely came off completely. I also felt around here. Obviously just the places where you put a mask, but really the contours lasted quite well. The blush, the other products, it's just the actual foundation on like the chin. It's okay on the nose, it's not that bad, but it's not as noticeable as the chin. The chin is just so red. But obviously, as you know, we were having problems with actually applying foundation to the chin earlier anyway. I'm just gonna have a closer look at the skin. Okay, so what I've said earlier about the foundation not really sitting in lines, any fine lines, that still stands and it's still not emphasizing pores. However, there's certain areas on the face where the foundation is just completely gone. So as you can see here, there's a completely red patch around the nose. The foundation is definitely gathered around the nose as well. And also it definitely has not lasted on these spots and redness here it's definitely came off here on the nose on the chin sorry if anyone could hear like a dog snoring in the background then that was my little pug but i've just kicked out the room now just because the noise was so annoying so anyway moving on as i was saying here it's completely rubbed off the chin is just literally there's just not product on the skin if i'm judging this foundation off the way it's performed today would i actually recommend this foundation the answer is no i actually wouldn't recommend this foundation i actually wouldn't and that is so disappointing for me personally because i actually love elf as a brand i love obviously like i've said before that they are cruelty free that they're vegan that's something that's important to me personally but i am i wouldn't say disappointed with the performance but definitely doesn't meet the standard of what i look for in a foundation the claims that it made I feel like it just completely fails on a lot of those claims. So mainly being, one, it's not full coverage and it claims to be full coverage. Two, suitable for all skin types when really I've got a normal skin like I've explained earlier and this is having trouble even sticking to my skin. Another claim that it makes is that it's oil free although the formula feels very greasy and like I said, I could actually feel it just sweating and melting off the skin. However, now that I'm actually talking about this foundation, it's actually making me think, did the primer have anything to do with it? Because like I said, I've never used this primer before. So I could be judging this foundation off something that the primer has actually done. So to be fair, that's actually not really a fair trial for the e.l.f. foundation. So I will actually try it again with a primer that I know and love and trust. Yeah, I didn't actually think of this earlier. I didn't actually think of using a new primer how if the result was bad how that could i wouldn't actually know what the problem was because like i said this felt very tacky on the skin and yeah i can't really say that i feel like this has done a good job at priming the skin and making my makeup last and i can't say that this has done a good job at being full coverage and long wear and it definitely does not last all day in certain areas anyway it's definitely not full coverage even upon application with a beauty blender and a brush i struggled more so with a brush i struggled but even with a beauty blender it still weren't perfect it's still not a flawless makeup look the foundation's definitely coming off around the hairline as well if i do have to answer honestly whether i would actually recommend this foundation the answer would be no despite it being so cheap i know it's only seven pound fifty it's no big deal to most people but 
there's obviously just no point in buying a foundation if it's just going to sit on your shelf you're not going to use it and you don't really like it or it doesn't really do what you need a foundation to do so yeah for me this weren't this weren't really a good experience like it looks okay but really it doesn't like for what i normally like a foundation to look like even after i've had it on for eight and a half hours this is not something that normally happens ever i'm quite underwhelmed with this foundation anyway some of the other products i want to talk about now that i've had these products on the skin for eight eight and a half hours so basically the morphe concealer i never said i weren't sure about this before but now i feel like i'm definitely even more unsure because as you can see here it's definitely creased a lot more it's definitely creased so even though at first it didn't crease now that i've been out in the heat i've had a mask on which obviously that makes your face sweat a lot more so it might be things like that that have affected this concealer but yeah it's definitely creasing and caking under the eyes now so i'm not really impressed with this concealer because this creasing does not normally happen with other concealers but again i'm going to give all of these products another try but i'm going to try them with other products that i know and love and trust so yeah i'm going to be doing all of these products again but in a different video but yeah for now i'm really definitely wouldn't recommend this i'm not sure about this but i don't think it's done a good job of keeping the makeup on i really don't and for now i definitely wouldn't recommend that either now this lip injection i actually feel like it did make a difference to my lips if you look at the intro to this youtube video my lips just look so full more full than normal i would say so i actually would recommend this now last but not least a standout product for me in this whole makeup review slash tutorial was the morphe cream lipstick in the shade whipped oh my god like this lipstick even though it's cream normally these type of lipsticks don't last half as long as matte lipsticks but this has literally lasted all day like there's still a bit of color on the lips now it's definitely worn off a lot from before bear in mind that was like a good few hours ago but yeah i'm very 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 impressed with the morphe lipsticks and i'm also impressed with the packaging like how sleek does that look i'd actually definitely recommend the morphe lipstick i love the color whipped as well never expected it to last as well as it has and it still actually feels a little bit there's still definitely product on the lips and it definitely hasn't dried up it still feels a little bit moisturized yeah this is definitely a so that is my final thought on the elf flawless satin foundation in the shade buff so let me know in the comment section down below if you use a different technique to maybe set this foundation or any hacks or tips or tricks when you, when using this foundation would be much appreciated and again thank you so much for watching please subscribe turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future reviews and tutorials from me and i will see you in the next tutorial don't forget to enter my giveaway as well which i will leave in the comments in the description bar down below